Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm the creator and author of the Dat Destroyer book. I'd like to go over something with you on the liver that we went over in the last group with my students. So let's take a look. For the guys in my group, um, I want you to listen up. There might be something that we might have missed in the last class, and then we'll be able to hit it here. First of all, the liver is the largest internal organ. Be very careful. The largest overall organ is the skin. But if it says the largest internal organ, we're going to go with the liver. Now, the liver has a capacity to regrow. Even if 75% of it is lost, it's got the ability to be able to regenerate itself. We have a nice question on this in the Death Destroyer book. Um, any pathology associated with the liver, such as cirrhosis or hepatitis, go to the Destroyer book. I have that in there, and I put some of those things in the notes for my bio notes. Now, as far as the functions of the liver goes, there's, there's over 500 functions. I would spend five hours tonight going over the functions of the liver. But we need not turn this into a PhD lecture. All we're going to do is just gloss over what we need to do for the DAT exam and the OAT exam. First of all, it stores lipid-soluble vitamins like we said in the last class, the fat-soluble vitamins. Now, we all know the fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, K. But I just want to clarify a point from last class. It mainly stores vitamin A to a very small extent, E and K, but it doesn't store vitamin D. Even though you might read in some bio books um, and you might see in notes about vitamin D, um, there's a lot of good scientific information that points to the fact that it's not stored in the liver. Um, if you look here, I wrote down it's going to be stored mainly in fat and muscle. So you got to be a little careful about that. I don't think that detail is going to come up. So I'll just keep it as it stores lipid-soluble vitamins. It produces bile. If you remember, bile is not an enzyme, but an emulsifier. So it breaks up the fat into smaller globules. So that's a short bet question. It produces bile. If you remembered, Mr. Mark, do you remember where was bile, where was bile stored? In the gallbladder. So the gallbladder will store and concentrate the bile, but it's made in the liver. The liver is also involved in the storage and the metabolism of iron. That's an easy one. Stores and metabolizes iron. It's involved in drug and toxin degradation. That's very important for you to understand. So when you're breaking down drugs or toxins, and for example, Kupfer cells, if you remember, these are nothing more than glorified macrophages. These guys are the liver phagocytes. These are the guys that are gonna be involved in defending against toxins. Also, how about drugs? I wrote down here that molecules are made soluble. Now that's a little hard to understand. You might say, what do you mean soluble? Many times we would oxidize a molecule, meaning we would add an oxygen through hydroxylated products, meaning we add OHs, or we change um, an alkane into, say, an epoxide. So you get the idea. If we, can, we do epoxidations and hydroxylations, remember from organic chemistry, and that'll add oxygens and make it more water soluble. Cholesterol and urea production. That's another guaranteed type of question. That's another thing that the liver is known for. Now, glycogen storage. That's another very important point. The liver stores glycogen. Number seven is an interesting one. Um, gluconeogenesis. Now, gluconeogenesis means that you are forming new glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors, such as lactate, amino acids, glycerol, and they make glucose. Once glucose is made, and by the way, gluconeogenesis is mainly in the liver, if I ever said, where else would it be? To a very small extent in the kidney. But we're gonna focus on the liver. Now, when glucose is in the liver, it's converted, as you know, into glucose 6-phosphate. Now, here's the kicker. When ATP is low, that means we need to produce more ATP, so it goes through glycolysis. And that's what we're gonna do in tonight's class. But when there's high levels of ATP, and we don't need to, um, have a metabolic cycle working, that means we're gonna, we're gonna have glycogen produced. So you gotta be careful. So glucose 6-phosphate has two main fates. It goes to glycolysis or it can make glycogen. Now, these are the seven big ones that I think you should know. Now, as far as blood supply 
will go. There's three things we need to know for the dat, MCATs, oats. Hepatic vein, blood leaves the liver. And there's three of them, and they will join with the inferior vena cava. So blood leaves the liver, hepatic vein. Hepatic artery delivers blood to the liver. And about 30%. So blood is brought to the liver, 30% to the hepatic artery. And the most important, 70% of the blood, the bulk, would be what's known as the hepatic portal vein. Now, this is important because nutrient-rich blood is delivered from the digestive tract. If you remember, the villi absorbs the nutrients, and from the, from the villi, it's gonna be going right to the liver through this hepatic portal vein. I hope this gives you a little idea of this very, very important organ. The next time we'll talk, we'll go over things like the stomach, and maybe we'll talk about the small intestine. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Fifth, this should be the essentials what you need to be able to ace this exam. Make sure you're looking at the new edition of our book. I got all the brand new questions in there. All right, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.